Are realtors creating motivated sellers within the villages? Let's look at some homes and find out. Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Today is uh, June 27th. She's just flying by, as I keep saying. Flying by. And um, thank you for watching our videos. I'm, I really appreciate it. I hope everybody likes and subscribes down below if they like the content. If they have any ideas of what we should be reviewing in some things, hey, feel free to post it down below, and we will definitely take it into consideration on some of the next videos. Are realtors creating motivated sellers, or are they even helping them in the villages? We're looking at some houses. You can search by motivated sellers within the MLS. You're not going to search here by our website if you take a look at it. I'll show you how to do that here after. But I'm pulling up motivated sellers within the villages. And um, I pulled them up today doing a basic search. It was about 31. They had the word motivated seller in the comments. So I'm taking the realtor's word that they're actually motivated. Okay. But... I'm seeing some of the pricing is not motivated. It's just typical pricing. And that seems to be the problem. But whose fault is it? Is it the seller's fault? Or is it the realtor's fault? And we don't know because we don't know the, we're not privy to that conversation with the owner and the realtor. But I'm looking at some of this pricing and some of these folks are taking six months discounts on this home. So are the realtors saying, hey, I think we can get 400 for your house. But four months from now, it's down to 320. Where if the owner is really motivated, they should have just priced it near that 320 mark. So that's kind of interesting what's going on in some of these homes that I'm going to show you here. You know, as a realtor, you have to be understanding of the owner's situation. There's a lot of people to get motivated. Um, yeah, people that pass away in the villages. You know, the majority of the people that live in the villages are older. Um, and things happen in life. People move back home. There's a bunch of stuff. So, you know, you really have to gauge how motivated they really are before you start putting that into their listing. And I don't know if some of these realtors are doing that. But if they are doing it, then a lot of these homes are still way overpriced. I mean, I don't know where some of these agents are getting some of this pricing. Because I'm not seeing it even when I look them up. I mean, some of these motivated sellers are 400, almost 350 to $400 a square foot. That's not on a waterfront. That's not on a golf course. So where are they coming up with this motivated seller stuff? And, you know, I personally don't want a listing, me personally, if the owner is not in reality when it comes to pricing. Like, the one thing about the villages, it's very easy to price homes in the villages. Should be. Seems some people have a problem with it. But it's not like you go in the north. You know, our homes are 200 years old, 100 to 200 years old, and they're all different. And they've all been added on to over the last 100 years. Okay? So you can come into our area in New York. It's not hard to find, especially in, in the cities and everywhere, a home that's 60, 70, or more years old with multiple additions, and they're all different style. That's much harder to price. The Villages is more cookie-cutter homes. So it's kind of like Vegas. It's kind of like Arizona as well, where the builders, you know, they stick to the patio villas. I mean, so I mean, it's not hard to price a patio villa if they're actually selling at that price. But I do seem to find that agents, you know, will overprice stuff. And maybe that's their sales pitch to overprice it. But an agent shouldn't be overpricing a home. They should be telling the honest truth about what their home is worth or what they should price it at based on value. And plus, you don't want to have a home in the villages where six months from now, it's gone from 300000 or let's say 400000 down to three twenty-five, and your realtor sold you on the fact that, oh, I think we can get four hundred a little bit under, you know, because that's not fair to you. And the minute that someone looks at your house and realizes that it's been on the market for what, two, three, four weeks, maybe five or six they start thinking that your home's got a problem. And that's the first thing that enters my head. And that will be the first thing that enters any but any realtor's head, without a doubt. I mean, a smart realtor. 
they're going to say, okay, what's wrong with this house? It's three months. Three months, no sale. Um, what's going on with it? Obviously, we're going to look at price. We can tell. I mean, I can tell immediately if something's overpriced in the villages. It's not that hard. It's easy. Um, like I said, because they're cookie cutter homes. I mean, you go to a patio villa area and the, it's all patio villas. It's not hard to price that kind of home. But I do find that realtors are definitely overpricing homes. I'm trying to figure out why. Well, I know why, but at the same time, you know, if you're going to list your house and if you think that the realtor is blowing smoke up your, up your skirt, then you probably need to get another realtor. That's my opinion. Now, I'm not saying that the realtors, some of the homes here that we're saying that can, these companies are doing that on purpose. I'm not saying any of that because most realtors are really honest. Uh, many of them just have an issue telling the owner the truth in a sense when it comes to pricing because many owners are very die hard. They will listen to, to, to Joanne down the road who sold her uh, premier home for 800000 and you're trying to sell a patio villa. Okay, They'll listen to her. But they won't listen to the realtor who has all the comps in front of them. Joanne doesn't have any comps. She has no clue. She just knows what she sold her house for. But your realtor's got all the comps in front of them. And you really should be paying attention to the sold comps. I don't care about list comps. List comps mean zero to me. And that's why I'm looking at these prices and some of these motivated seller properties. And uh, so if you have a realtor where, you know, A, they're telling you that, okay, we don't, I don't think your house is going to get that. You really should pay attention to that realtor. That's when your mind should do a reverse thought. What you really want to say is, well, get the hell out of my house because Johnny down the road will, will list my house for what I want. That's not the way to go, to, to go about it. You need to be honest, realistic. Look at the comps they provide. If they don't provide any comps, sold homes. Now, comps, I'm talking sold homes. If they're not providing that for you in the villages, then yes, I recommend going to John, going to someone else down the road. Okay, but you really need to listen to your realtor if they're providing full-fledged comps, similar homes in your area. Okay, um, so I have some some properties here. I put, typed in motivated sellers. It's pretty basic. You can go up here to our search tab. I go to villages. If you haven't searched, you go to this villages tab. So it makes your life easy. I'm finding properties in the villages. Um, some people like to search by certain models. And you could do that through the MLS. But the MLS, uh, some of the realtors are a little lazy. I'm putting some of that information in. Some are really good. Um, but if, you like, if you're looking for you know, a patio villa, like a Topaz model, you can go in here, you can go to all inventory, click on that, go over here to this little menu right here, this little drop down menu, which will give you a lot more search options. And you can, should be able to go into this little, let me see if I can find it here, this little keyword box right here. It's under land lease fee, a little keyword. And what this box does is it searches the listing information from the agent. And is looking for specific words. But if the agent doesn't put in there Topaz Mono, Oleander, um, Courtyard Villa, doesn't put that in there, then it's probably not going to find that house. So it's not 100%, but it works pretty good. I actually typed in a bunch of Courtyard Villa in, in there the other day. It put up a bunch of Courtyard Villas. So it works well. Not 100%, but it's a way for you to maybe search a model or a type of home that you're searching for. Okay. And typically, the realtors are pretty good at putting in there, you know, the village. You know, it's a premier home, designer home, right? They're good at doing some of that stuff. Um, and look at that. Now, you can also go in there and type in there no bond. So I have some people that are looking for homes that with no bonds. Now, just keep in mind that the MLS is only as good as what the listing agent enters into the MLS. So if you're looking for a no bond home, they have to put it in the listing, in order for us to know there's no bond. Like, if you're looking for six houses, if there's if the realtor doesn't put in there no bond, I have to call up, we have to call the county, we have to call districtgov.org, whatever it's called, and we have to call them on the phone, get her on the phone, and we have to actually go through each one and ask her if there's a bond. Typically, they have a bond, a CDD form. Some do, some do not. I had to call the other day because I was looking at, at a, uh, um, a patio villa, and the information from the realtor wasn't in there for some reason. So I had to actually call her up, get the information, see if the bond, there was a bond. And there was, it was about 14000 Not too bad. But that's information that should be done by your realtor. Okay, that's another thing where if you're listing a property, you have to be very thorough, making sure that your realtor is on top of things. 
you know, they should be providing your bond information to the buyers and to us that are showing a buyer your property. Just keep that in mind, okay? But I have, uh, I, I went in this keyword box here, which you can do yourself. And I typed in motivated, and it popped up some stuff. It popped up uh, 31 properties in and around the villages, a couple down here in the newer sections too. And, um, you know, some of these I've been looking at, going through, you know, are they really motivated? I mean, this is 320,000. It's 1,392 square foot. It's three beds, two bath. It's currently sitting at 229, not the worst pricing, but really not pricing for motivated because it's been on the market 141 days. So is a seller motivated or not, right? And if you look here, price reduction. Wow, the seller's added brand new stainless steel appliances. Well, yeah, because it's overpriced, right? The, the appliances aren't the problem. It's overpriced. So, and had the garage walls and floors painted. Again, not the problem. Not the reason why it's not selling. So these are little things. You know, the, the agent has overpriced this house, potentially. And the seller thinks they got to th keep throwing money at this property in order for it to sell. Where, you know, brand new stainless steel appliances, that's three to five grand. Painting the garage walls and the floor painted, that could be, I don't know, what? two, three, four, five grand, depending on what the, if they painted the floor or had it sealed. So you have to be very careful. And it says here, sell and motivated, call for private showing. Okay, well, let's look at the pricing on this. Starting at 329, actually 335 back in February, 2024. Four months later, exactly almost four months, going on five now, it's down to 320, so it's only down 15 grand. So how motivated is this seller? Right? That's that's one thing I always question. Are they really motivated? It's sitting at 229 a square foot. But one thing I do find is seller keeps putting money into this property, and that that's not the issue. The issue is it's just overpriced. So if you price this accordingly, the seller shouldn't have to throw another dime into this property. Um, and that was just one example. And they just did another price drop recently for two grand in early June. Let's look at another one. I mean, this is, I did this review in this house when it first came out four months ago. That's pretty looking home. It's nice. You know, it's got a big tree, big, big, beautiful tree in the front yard. It's got water view. There's a, there's a big road behind it. You know, sending at 380, they just dropped to 14K. It says one or more deals have been virtually staged. Owner is motivated. Submit an offer. Get this thing off my hands, right? Well, <laughs> In today's market, buyers typically don't do that, okay? Over the last three years, it's been a seller's market. And a lot of agents aren't trained to be, especially new ones, if they're only three years old, they're not trained to be in a buyer's market. Agents aren't. They'll try to talk you into coming up in your price or being near asking. Now, don't get me wrong. If this house is priced really aggressively, yeah, the agent needs to tell you, look, this is really aggressive. This is a really good price. If you come in below this, there's a really good chance you're going to deny it. Okay, that, that's just reality. But a lot of agents aren't trained to submit low offers. They care. They haven't been trained properly. They've only been in a market, especially after 2020. They've only been in a real estate market that has been a seller's market. Means of, okay, I'm going to submit an offer. Oh, no, no, I don't want your offer. I got six more over here, you know, with no inspections. 20 grand above asking. That's the market they were trained in. Okay, now it's a totally different market in Florida. Now it is, okay, I have no offer. Submit something. Okay, submit it to me. But the agents still, their mindset is, okay, you know, I can't, you no, know, this is asking 380000 I can't submit an offer for three fifty. That's their mindset. On some of the agents that haven't been around a while, this is where experience really comes into play. Now, me personally, now realtors are supposed to submit any offer. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna if it's three hundred eighty thousand, you want to say, hey, submit an offer for two hundred. I'm gonna say, call the listing agent. I'm not doing it. Okay, personally, I'm not gonna do that because it's stupid. It's wasting my time. It's wasting your time. But if somebody came in to me and said, hey, make an offer for three fifty cash, I'd submit that offer in three seconds. You'd I'd have an offer to your email box in ten minutes. We'd submit that offer to the agent and say, look, this thing ain't selling. You overpriced it. It ain't my fuck. Sorry, it ain't my problem. This is your problem. This is your seller's problem. Okay? Not mine. So, let's submit the offer and see what happens. 
that's what a, a properly trained agent is willing to do. And it's, you know, it doesn't seem to be happening in some of these. But I reviewed this house four months ago. I mean, it's a nice house inside. I mean, it's, it's pretty. It's across the street from the water view, but there is a road in between it, right? It's been staged. It's got nice flooring, a nice little layout. Okay, but again, how motivated is this seller? One or more photos says my virtual estate owner is motivated. Submit an offer. No bond, too, on this house. If it's not selling, it's overpriced. So if you overprice a home on a motivated seller, they're going to think like they have to spend money, okay? Added new stainless steel appliances, painted the garage, painted the floors in the garage. Like, that's not a big deal. I can paint a garage floor in about 20 minutes, okay? Stop getting your seller to spend money when they're motivated. Now, you know, here's another one. You know, this was just 2162 Quinn Lane. Now, it's 1,200 square feet. It's still sitting at 267. It was built in 2011. It's not like it's 2019. But you see 2019, 20 houses going for 250 a square foot. So, again, first words. Seller motivated. Welcome home. 3-2 Corpus Christ. Corpus Christi Ranch Home. Village St. James. Now, seller's motivated. Started at 334 in April. Two months later, 325. Still no sale. How motivated is the seller? That's a conversation you're going to have with them. So these are just things that I look at. It's been on the market 83 days. And it's a motivated seller. So I would feel horrible if this seller had to think that their house is the problem. It's not that. Just their price is the problem, right? Let's look at another one. Here's another one. Now, this one actually isn't priced too bad. I reviewed this one too. Still sitting on the market after how many days? 83 days. I think I reviewed this one 30 to 60 days ago. I think possibly twice because I thought it was okay. It's sitting at one ninety nine a square foot. At least this person's down to two hundred dollars a square foot. Okay, huge reduction. Motivated seller. Bonds paid. It's got a brand new roof in twenty, HVAC in twenty, water heater in twenty. Okay, living oak. It's a live oak Lantana designer home, Village of Springdale. It's a nice area. Now, one thing I see about this property, if I go inside, is that everything needs work. It's going to have to be updated from top to bottom. Okay, unfortunately. You're going to have that new countertops, new flooring, paint, probably showers. Okay, if I go into the kitchen here, you know, the tile is going to have to be redone. Um, so there's there's a bunch of stuff in this house you're going to have to redo, which can cost some money. This is 2,000 square feet. But the good thing about these homes, there's no basements. They're much easier than rehabbing a home in the north, let's put it that way, or the west. You know, we typically have basements, and that's all the problems in our area start in the basement. But you're going to have to have countertops, appliances. You know, you have to update this home. Okay? And that costs a lot of money. But again, this owner is motivated. How motivated are they? They're down to $200 a square foot. But if you have an agent who's not trained or has never lived in a buyer's market, you know, maybe they're afraid to talk into submitting an offer in this house. Submit something. $399. Put an offer in for $350. See what happens. Maybe the counter back. If they're really motivated, we'll find out. Right? So bond is paid on this too. So let's look at another one here. Now this is a mobile home, single wide, up north. It's on Teakwood Lane. It's a beautiful inside. It's actually, this mobile home is nicer than all the, the last four I just showed you. And you'll see why. I mean, the inside, I know what happened to this house. Somebody bought it as an investor. Probably paid too much, which is typical in a lot of these homes the last few years. It's not on the golf course, but even though these photos try to make it think that they're close by. I mean, look at this. This this house is pretty. They, they've done a great job rehabbing this whole thing, I think. I, photos can play some tricks on you, but you know, they did a good job. Everything's painted clean, nice countertops, you know, brand new appliances, new carpet, lighting. Okay, it's got a big lanai on the side. I mean, this is sitting, and I'll pull it up. Let me see some details. So this is uh, Teak, right? Yeah, Teak one. So I pulled it up at uh, at the county, Lake County website, which you can pull up. There's three counties in the villages. Maybe a fourth one coming down below. I'm not even sure yet. I haven't even looked. But I know there's already three. 
And if you go to the county, someone asked before previously, how do I look up the flood map? You can just text me or email me the address and I can look it up for you. We have access to all that as realtors. But also, you can go to the county. Lake County at least has it. You can look at the FEMA flood map. Just let you know. See if it's in a flood zone. Okay. But if I look at the sales history of this property, it's had a ton of sales. I mean, it looks like over the last 15 years, it's been selling every two to three years. Look at this. Warranty deed, warranty deed, warranty deed, warranty deed. So back in 2000, it sold for 48 grand. 2012, it sold for 59 grand, right? So, but recently, there was a certificate of title, a quick claim deed, which I'm assuming someone passed away, okay, that owned this property. Someone at 20 paid 100. 22, somebody passed away, they got a quick claim deed for 100 bucks, typically family. And then they sold, the family sold it to somebody here. And we can pull up their, their, their information. The actual warranty deed, okay? So Margaret Ann O'Brien, trustee, okay, for the family trust, sold it to who? High Point Holdings, okay? They're down in Orlando, limited liability company. Okay, that's fine. But let's see what they didn't own it very long. They bought it for 107. Not sure what they did with it, but they sold it not much long, not much later to, uh, High Point Holdings to CPR Real Estate for like 116 k They lost money in this deal. They didn't make any money. Okay. So that's that's kind of where it went on this. I mean, it could be maybe they flipped this property real quick for a fee. That's possible. But just to let you know that, you know, you can see the history of the properties here. There's three different counties that I have saved in my bookmarks. You can come in here and take a look and see what's going on with these properties. But a lot of the times, the, uh, you know, I look, you know, you have a $1.3 million, you know, supposedly motivated seller. Is it really motivated? So motivated seller with price reduction. This is state size entertainer's dream home. All premier neighborhood, okay? It's, it's, it's Bridgeport, right? It's a nice home. Let's see what they listed it at. $1.5 million. It's down 200, almost 200K. Is that motivated? One point, actually, they listed for 1.5. Down 250,000 bucks. So these are little things that, as a realtor, you really have to pay attention. I mean, this house is beautiful, too. I remember reviewing this house two to three months ago. I love their furniture. I love the lighting. Right? It's beautiful. But, Okay. When you're motivated, you got to sell accordingly. So they just did another 45k price drop. To to most buyers, if you're looking for a buyer to place an offer, to most buyers, if you're motivated, they don't want to see your house listed at retail. They're not going to place an offer in. They're not going to whack you over the head with an offer three hundred thousand dollars below your current list price. Now they'll come in fifty grand below, right? They'll come in hundred grand down. But, you know, when you get to 250 down, I mean, that house is going to sit there for six months before it gets down to a price. Somebody may say, hey, let's write an offer. But if they now what would happen if if they listed this house for one million two hundred forty nine thousand from the get go? Would they have sold this house already? That's the question. Right. Would they have already sold it? It's a beautiful home. It's got vaulted ceilings. The furniture is gorgeous. The lighting is gorgeous. The layout's gorgeous. It's, it's pretty. Okay. So those are just things that we look at as realtors. At least I look at as realtors. You know, just because someone says they're motivated, um, are realtors holding you back? If you're a motivated seller and your realtor says, hey, no, list it for 350 because I think you can get it. Well, thinking the realtor needs to truly understand your situation then. You need to tell them how motivated you really are. How bad do you want to sell this thing? You know, because the market in Florida has been dropping. The prices have been dropping dropping at least two years. Mid-2022, early 2022, they started to drop. That was the peak of the villages. That was a peak of the United States real estate market, no matter what anybody tells you. If you see videos online about, oh, the U.S. housing market hits a new high, it's all BS. Don't believe it. They're just manipulating the data. The middle class has basically dropped out of the 
of the real estate market in most places around the country. The new first time home buyers have literally disappeared. I haven't sold to a new home buyer probably two years. First time home buyer? Well, one. It was a VA. Okay. I haven't sold to just one in two years. Those people are disappeared. So when they go and they look at all these stats and they say home prices are up across the country, that's not true. What's happened is the people that buy those typical, you know, family homes are lower. They've disappeared. So all you have are these higher priced homes being sold, which when you take a median shows that prices are going up across the country and everybody believes it. Don't believe it. It's all bogus. I did a video about a year ago. And I took a lot of slack for it, but it was reality. A lot of people have a lot of interest in keeping prices up. And I'm looking here at these prices on some of these homes. And I'm kind of wondering what's going on with the pricing. You know, where are they getting these prices? If you're listing your home with a realtor, you need to see the comps. Where are my comps? Where are things that have recently sold? The villages are selling properties. You know, okay, what are, what are the VLS homes selling at? Where are they? Did you look them up? What recently sold in the VLS? Did you look them up? Because you go to the county and look that up too, okay? So there are things you have to do to properly price a home. And some of these homes are just, uh, you know, out of whack. They're not really for a motivated seller. To me, they're out of whack. And I don't know. Maybe it could be the seller just put it in there. Maybe the agent added it. But so I just want to let you know that if you are a motivated seller, be honest with your realtor. you got to be honest with them. Tell them what's going on with your situation. Tell them you may have to file bankruptcy in three months. That's really important. Tell them you're already two or three months behind in your payment if you have one. Tell them you're two years behind in your taxes. They have to know that stuff. If I don't know that stuff, I can't help you. And then if I submit an offer and I submit the offer, and this has happened to me before in the past, a long time ago. And this is, you know, you learn your lessons. But I had a seller one time where... We probably had their house, again, a buyer's market. It was back in probably 2011, 2012. ton of homes in the market. Getting to where Florida is again. And I sold this house. It was I think we listed for 169 We sold it for like 158 Okay. But then I submit the offer to the seller saying, look, okay, seller agreed to it. But then it comes out that the seller was four months behind in his mortgage payment. And back then, you know, FHA, VA, Sunny May conventional loans, they didn't wait six, seven months, a year to foreclose on you like they're doing today. That's the reason why foreclosures are down. They're down because FHA, all these guys are delaying the foreclosure process. Back then, they started the foreclosure process on day 90. Okay? And then six months after that, you were out of your house. I mean, you were taking a hike. They were kicking you out. If you didn't want to get out, unless you had some kind of court case where you had a right to stay there, there you were gone. And even in New York, believe it or not, a Democrat state where they just think everybody should live for free in some places. And I think the problem is today, everybody's staying longer. The, the foreclosure process is taking longer. But back to that case, after we already submitted the offer, had it approved by the attorneys, ready to go, then he comes back to me, makes a phone call out of the blue, says, hey, Mark, I just want to let you know that I'm four months behind on my payment. And they started the foreclosure process. I just got a ton of paperwork. Okay, well, now it's a totally different ballgame. Okay, now it's kind of going into short sale territory because when he was four months behind, they tacked on a bunch of fees. And when they started the foreclosure process, the attorney tacked on five grand. The attorney tacked on five grand immediately right off the bat onto his fees. So you have a bunch of fees happening now. Now the bank's turning it over to their attorney. Their attorney's racking up fees on a daily or monthly basis. All this stuff really happens really quick. And your your one, you know, your 125 mortgage will be 135, 140 really quick with fees. So that's what happened. And we had to actually cancel that deal. We had to actually cancel the deal. That actually that house went to foreclosure. The buyer backed out. And um, that guy was out of the house in nine months and it was back in the market probably six months later um, with an REO agent selling for you know ninety nine thousand. So th that's kind of what happens. So you, you have to be fair and honest with your agent, number one. And your agent has to be responsible in the sense of, okay, look, these people are motivated. I need to price their house like they're motivated. We can't be overpricing houses 30, 40, 50 grand. And then six months from now, get it down to where it should have been six months ago to help this motivated seller out. 
That seems to be what's going on in a lot of places, especially in, in, in the villages and some areas. So keep an eye out for that. Not all these people are motivated. I'm not saying they are. And, um, but at the same time, if you're looking at a motivated seller house, you know, hey, you know, just because they have it overpriced doesn't mean that you don't come in with, a, with an aggressive offer. And we're willing to do that for you. I don't care. I'll submit any offer. It's okay with me. I'll put an offer in for $425. i will put an offer in for $360. I don't care. Okay. To be honest with you, once I do all the comps, I'll submit all the comps with my offer and say, you're overpriced. This is where it should be. This is what we're offering. So that's one way you can get around all this stuff. Okay. Don't let the pricing on homes fool you into paying more for a house. Okay. Don't let the pricing on homes fool you into paying more for a house. Just because an agent has a price of four fifty dollars on a house doesn't mean that that price is right at all. I mean, if you call us up, say, look, I'm thinking about this house. Let's look at it. Let's take a look. If you're not around, we'll do a video walkthrough. And then I'm going to pull my own comps for this house. I want to see recent sales. Potentially, when this agent pulled these comps on this house, they could be six months to nine months old or more. Totally different market than today. So that's all I'm saying. You have to have experience. You have to have experienced agents. A lot of agents in the game today, they've only been around since 2020. Three, four, maybe four or five years. They only know a seller's market. They're not good at the buyer's market. It's a totally different world. So anyways, Mark here at Gable Realty. I just want to cover some things with you on this. Our realtors, you know, are they creating motivated sellers by how they're pricing things? I mean, even more motivated sellers by how they're pricing motivated seller houses. If someone tells me that this seller is motivated in their comments, motivated sellers, okay, owners motivated, I assume that it's motivated and they're pricing it aggressively. It doesn't seem to be happening in a lot of things. So if you have any questions, you can go to our website here. You can search all the villages. Go to buy a home. Ton of inventory. I have it broken down by highways, by roads. Open houses for the day, every single day of the MLS. Lifestyle visit. If you're going to do a lifestyle visit again, we'll give you up, give you up to $1,000 back. Refund every lifestyle visit. You save your receipt of the rental. And uh, if a relocation program, if you're looking to relocate to the villages, we will actually help you find an agent in your home state, negotiate a commission from them, and then we'll give half that back to you. Great little program, just a great way for you to save money. Everybody's looking to save money. If you use us, I'm going to save you money. Um, and then you can go in here, sell a home. We have a listing program, our luxury marketing program. We only use top-notch photographers, videos, aerial drones. Um, and I have my own aerial drones, among other things. But um, you can also get a home valuation on here, home val, and you can get a market report. So let's say you're looking at buying a home potentially six months, 12 months, two years down the road. Do the market report. That'll send you every bi-weekly or every month, depending on what you select. It'll send you what's going on in the market, where's prices falling, what's sold, what's not sold, based on the criteria you enter, okay? You can also join a Facebook, our Village Facebook page. I'm putting together material and data and videos and stuff to go on there that it will not be on YouTube videos. So you can also go there and get some extra stuff. And if you're looking at nearby 55, there's a ton of retirement communities around the villages. Feel free to check these out. Um, you have Leesburg on here, ton of 55 plus communities in Ocala. And uh, just be careful some of these places. You don't own the land of some of them. You, it's pretty much a lease, a long-term lease. So just be careful of that, okay? But we'll do that for you, and we can show these prob these areas for you as well. If you're looking at upstate New York, again, we have the same menus. Come in here. You can buy a home. I have it all broken down by cities because we're in more cities up here than we are in, Phila, in uh, Florida. And then we also have sell a home. You know, again, we're going to use high-end photography. We're going to use really good um, uh, marketing and presentations and on any home above 250 in New York, okay? And you can also get a home vow. But if you're looking for foreclosures, again, they're typically, if you don't know what a foreclosure is, it's a bank-owned property, typically. They use third parties to really sell their inventory. But you can go to New York and Florida as well and check out their foreclosure inventory. But I want everybody to have an awesome day. And um, again, are they truly motivated? Is your realtor helping you out? And if you're a buyer, don't be afraid to submit a very aggressive offer on some of these motivated homes. We'll do it for you, and I'll actually do comps and let you know where this property should be. So everybody have an awesome day. I hope um, this helps a little bit. I know I didn't do any home reviews, but I wanted to pull up some properties just to give you a general idea of what I'm talking about. 
and I will talk to you soon. Post your comments and likes down below. Please subscribe. Have an awesome day, and uh, enjoy yourself.